What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we have some very important news that I want to get to because everything is happening right now. Right now what's going on is Nancy Pelosi is highly considering a visit to Taiwan in August and China is not happy about this. I will address why in just a minute. We also know the education department has stated that as soon as President Biden forgives student loans, they will work to ensure that this happens within months of the announcement. But we just have to wait for President Biden. We also know that this morning, the Bureau of Economic Analysis, they reported that the personal consumption expenditures rose by 6.8%. This is actually the largest increase since 1982 when it was, I believe, 6.9%. But if you exclude food and energy from this, we're still up 4.8%, which is massive. And this has many people speculating that July's CPI report that comes out on August 10th is gonna be higher than 9.1%. So I wanna address what's going on there. We also know power companies are extremely worried about the heat going into the final month of summer. Some are worried that this is gonna be a massive crisis. And we know that power companies are and have been extremely worried because residents are running their air conditioners nonstop. Now, I want to touch on something because this, the, it's, a, it's an issue. Because what multiple power companies want is they want the ability to allow themselves to adjust residents' thermostats to ensure that there's no... Uh, the electrical grid doesn't just go down during peak hours. And I'm curious on your thoughts as to whether or not you would allow your power company to adjust your thermostat up or down, depending on the time of day, depending on the you know the you know the temperatures outside. Would you let them do that with your consent? Just curious. And lastly, we're getting reports just now that Hershey is saying that. Halloween candy is likely to be you know, in short supply this year, and I want to address what's going on there as well. So let's get right down to it. So here's what I can tell you. Right now, Nancy Pelosi is still expected to go and visit Taiwan. Well, here's what's happening. Right now, Beijing is warning of forceful countermeasures to any visit. Not only that, Let's read this together, okay? This is from Wu Zingbo, director of Center of uh, American Studies at Fudan University in Shanghai, says, if Nancy Pelosi goes, there will definitely be a Taiwan Strait crisis, and it will definitely exceed the last one in 1995 to 1996. That is because China's military capabilities by far exceed those of 26 years ago. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, for one, some are saying that Nancy Pelosi should not be making this trip. However, this is supposed to be a trip that is part of Asia. So whether she goes or not, well, we're going to see what happens there. But the expectation is she is going to go to Taiwan. She's not going to uh, believe the warnings that China is giving her. And she's just going to proceed with her trip. Now, what we see after that, that is going to be massive. I do not know exactly what's going to happen after. We're going to have to wait and see. But what I can tell you is it is going to be different because chances are China is going to do something. We don't know exactly what. There's been speculation. There's been rumors. But again, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because honestly, it just never stops. But if Nancy Pelosi does visit Taiwan, some are expecting this is going to drum up some, some more uh, issues between China and the United States. So we're going to see what happens there. We do know that uh, President Biden is going to meet with uh, uh, you know, China's uh, leader, uh, I think, in the next week or two. So as soon as we have information on what's going on there, I promise I'll fill you in on those updates as soon as we get them. Here's the next thing. The Education Department. They are stating, okay, and we'll just go ahead and read this from Insider. The education department is reportedly prepared to grant student loan forgiveness to millions of borrowers within months after Biden makes an announcement. 
Now, here's the reason why I want to touch on this. We have no idea when President Biden plans on making an announcement. President Biden told us but a little over a month ago he would have an answer within a week. That never happened. What we do know, though, is that right now, the, the issue with what's happening is some borrowers still don't have a income verification. They, they haven't reported anything on their taxes. That's a problem because what we are seeing is you have to make under a certain amount of money every single year or really last year in order to qualify for student loan forgiveness. Right now, the way it breaks down it, and this is what President Biden is considering, he would cancel up to $10,000 in student debt for borrowers making under $150,000 per year. Okay, That is massive because if you make over $150,000 but you haven't filed your taxes, maybe last year you made less. That's what the Biden administration, according to reports, is waiting on. They want to make sure everybody files their taxes so that they can come in and be like, yeah, you do not qualify so you still have to pay that $10,000 or whatever it is. So that's kind of what we're seeing at this time. Now, as soon as we get more information on that, I promise I will fill you in on the latest news and updates once we get it. But what I can tell you is President Biden promised us more answers about a month ago, and we still haven't received them. But let's get into this morning's report from the, the Bureau of uh, Economic, uh, what are the, the Bureau of Economic Analysis because they reported earlier. And again, this is, this is still somewhat troubling because this is the highest level since January of 1982. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal, okay, we can come down and we can read this report, or not really this report, but this article if we want to, but the reason why this is such a big deal, okay, because of these numbers right here. The, the personal consumption expenditures uh, price index rose by 6.8%. This is the biggest 12 month move since uh, the 6.9% increase in January of 1982. But if you take out food and energy, PCE increased by 4.8%. That's still pretty big, but it's not as high as the 5.3% that we hit in February. So it's important to note that things are still moving somewhat sideways. This is why many people believe that when we have our, our CPI report that comes out in like 12 days, we may not see it go from 9.1% down to the seven or eights. It may stay at 9%. It may go up to 9.4 or 9.5%. That's the worry. And the reason why this is such a big deal is if we continue to see inflation trend sideways or kind of tick up, the problem is nobody's really ready for that. We're struggling as it is to afford our you know, basic necessities. And if things continue to get worse, it's only going to get worse for the American people as well. So we're going to see what happens there. Now, I want to talk about something that I have never talked about here on this channel, but it's giving control to your, your electric company. Because what we know right now is power companies, they really want to make sure that their, their, the power grid doesn't go down. Right? It hurts them, hurts residents, hurts communities. Everybody is just really impacted. Right, The economy struggles. What we know at this point is that some power companies want to have a little more control over just giving you know the just utmost amount of power to every single resident. Now, I understand that's how power companies make money, but the problem is if every single household, every single business is running their air conditioner nonstop, if they are running their uh, pool pumps to heat up their pool and they run this nonstop, okay? if they always have their, their lights on, everything is just running. The problem is our electrical grid can get overloaded and it would actually shut down. This is a problem. We've seen this in Texas multiple times. Okay, This is something that they worry about in the South every single year and it's only going to get worse. 
here's what I what I want to ask you. Would you let your power company adjust your thermostat remotely? They all you got to do is be like, "Yep, check the little box that yeah, I consent. My power company can adjust my thermostat whenever they see fit to ensure that the power grid does not go down." Would you consent to this? I'm just curious because I know a lot of people think that this is a uh, government overreach. I know Republicans are are big on this, do not want to uh, allow this to happen, but many Democrats say this is a must. We have to figure out a way to ensure that our electrical grid does not go down, especially in peak hours. But I'm just curious, what are your thoughts? Would you consent to the electric company just raising the, the temperature of your house to ensure that your your, uh, your air conditioner isn't running nonstop. I'm just curious, let me know down in the comment section below. Also, the other thing I'm curious about, had a conversation the other day with a family member, and uh, I asked, you know, what do you have your thermostat set at? She didn't know. And uh, she asked me, and I was like, well, I keep mine right about 70 to 72. It just hovers between 70 and 72 all day long. That's what it is. But I'm just curious, do you think that's too high should it be colder in my house or is that perfectly fine? Let me know. What is your thermostat set at in your house? And lastly, this is something that I, I knew was going to happen, um, but I didn't think we'd get reports on this so soon. Hershey is warning that Hall Halloween treats are going to be in short supply. Now, why is this? Well, according to the CEO, she says that the reason why they are going to be in short supply is because their company has found it more difficult to secure ingredients as a result of the war in Ukraine. Well, this isn't just for Hershey. A lot of candy companies are going to experience the exact same thing. Here's the warning. If you are thinking about buying Halloween candy, maybe not buy it. Uh, the month of October or the last couple weeks of October, you might, you might need to buy it in September to ensure that you have some candy. Now, it may not have all the Halloween, uh, you know, the pumpkins and the, the ghosts and goblins or whatever. It may not have all the characters, but it's still candy. And when you give it to kids that come up to your house, it's perfectly fine. Most do not care if it's an orange wrapper versus the regular you know, wrapper that you get with a you know, a Hershey bar, right? It doesn't matter. So I'm just curious, how many of you are gonna shop for Halloween candy a little bit early? And I also bring this up because one of the other issues that we are potentially facing is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving this year is expected to be worse than last year. The shortages that we saw last year in things like beer, turkey, stuffing mix, right? Rolls, things like that. The expectation is this year, it is going to be worse. It would be harder to get a lot of those things. So my question to you is, will you also buy stuff for Thanksgiving dinner? And will you buy it earlier than you did last year? I'm just curious because I know a lot of people are either going to just forgo Thanksgiving entirely, not even celebrate it, or they are going to buy things a little bit early. So as I can, as I know more information about what's going on, I promise I will fill you in on all the latest news and updates. But what we are expecting this year is you either need to buy things earlier for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and even Christmas, or you run the risk of not having things for that day. So that's what we know at this time. As always, as I know more, I promise I'll come back on and share all the latest news and updates. Again, just want to thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.